We're back on the biathlon for the second pursuit of the day here in Le Grand Bornard. Only the fourth time that the World Cup circuit has been here. Uh, the way things are going and with the support that this event is getting, surely it can't be long before it's an annual event. Stunning scenes around Le Grand Bonnard, just up the road from Annecy. And the French enjoying every minute of the women's pursuit. Didn't quite come off. They were very, very close, though. And uh, they're in good song as a result of the efforts of Julie Simon who came home to finish in second place, having uh, started some way off the mark down in 13th. So it was a wonderful effort from her. A missed target on the last uh, shoot cost her the win, uh, but that went to Elvira Erberg of Sweden, who got her first ever World Cup win. An outstanding performance from Elvira Erberg, and uh, I think we're going to see more from her. She's certainly a contender for the overall this year. A little bit of sunshine at this year, never goes amiss. Well, I think that uh, pursuit has got the crowd on their feet. They are expecting more. Uh, just looking down, Fion Maillet is probably their best chance. He starts in fourth position and uh, he's starting only 21 seconds off the lead of uh, Johannes Tingispo. Jacques Alain there, one of the fastest two men on the circuit at the moment with Samuelsson of uh, Sweden. Fion Maillet, there he is, the 21 second gap behind Johannes Tingis. Uh, in years gone past, you didn't want to give him 2.1 seconds, let alone 21, but he's not as quick as he was last year. Latipov, who has been brilliantly consistent this year well placed in the world cup standings and well placed in the start today starting number two and khalili won't be too far behind him starting 11 some 48 seconds off the lead so just moments to go we start at the top of the hour So the final unnervous moments before the start of the race to get the trigger pressure tested and a note of the rifle serial number is taken uh, during that process as well. That was Ligrid just handing his rifle. Smolski, what a, what a fabulous season he's having. Sixth again yesterday, only 27 seconds behind. But uh, here he is, Johannes Tingis Boer. Uh, it's been some time since he felt the form that, which he displayed yesterday. And... Uh, it would be lovely to see him, as he's done here the past three times of asking, having won the sprint, uh, going on to take the pursuit title as well. But uh, he certainly hasn't been himself in terms of ski speed, uh, accuracy on the range, time taken on the range. All of those small factors have added up to, well, place him now in sixth, sixth position in the world ranking. He did gain a... With his win yesterday, he did pull back the deficit on Samuelson, who's leading, and Jacqueline in second place. So he's, uh, he's not in touching distance yet for that top spot, but certainly a confidence builder, I would say. Terry Boo, Johannes Tingis Boo's older brother, there he is. He starts 15th today, only 53 seconds behind. So this race really is, is quite open, depending on how <laughs> the outcomes go there behind the athletes as we see the 50 meters of uh, important shooting range any targets missed today yeah you have to turn left onto the 150 meter penalty loop total distance 12.5 kilometers you can see there uh, so five laps uh, and they will be trying to save a little something if the women's race was anything to go by there will be a challenge over the last 2.5 well there we have it uh, total climb it's a it's a tough tough track 416 meters 
and you can see the profile there. The undulations are sapping and the total climb from the stadium to the high point. And certainly the last quarter back to the range is, is an easy journey in terms of uh, mostly descent. So the snow temperature is still minus seven, air temperature minus five. So although it's sunny, uh, the track is still well frozen, well frozen and firm. Wind flags, we saw them there. It's just uh, unbelievably, we've had uh, th th so far three very calm days in terms of the wind. And that is the case once again today. Everybody's looking very calm. The Russian team just uh, going through their final preparation. So not too long to go before the start of the third pursuit of the season. Latyapov starting number two today. He's uh, shown great consistency. Very, very strong with a rifle. Maybe today is his day. Yet to have a World Cup win. Johannes Tingisburg, it's been a long time coming. Seven races in before he finally gets his first win of the season. He trails in the overall World Cup rankings. He's on 249, Samuelson on 282. It's not as big a gap as you might expect. It's a very, very tight season. It's a very, very tight start to this pursuit, and it should be an absolute cracker. A lot of pressure on the French team, as expected. Uh, yes, they'll maybe ski faster on the track, but in terms of shooting, it it does add that extra spice of pressure. And I just hope that they can cope with it well today. Only the top 60 qualifying. And uh, as always, just over two minutes 20 between uh, the top 60. It is uh, uncanny how often that happens. and. You look at it halfway through the race and the margin is something like four minutes. By the time everyone's finished, the gap down to two and a half minutes there or thereabouts. Delighted to see that Campbell Wright of New Zealand has made it through, Mike. He's, he really is a unique and very talented athlete uh, and still only 19-year-old uh, from Hawaii Flat, uh, which is close to Wanaka. Certainly, he's got a very bright future ahead of him. Young and talented. Exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't label too many people with that. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to come from junior level to senior level. Here's Latyapov, very excited by him. Typical uh, Russian build. The Russians generally a couple of inches shorter than everyone else in this game, Mike. I uh, don't know whether that's to do with their selection process or the fact that shorter shoot better. <laughs> Maybe the shoot better. What about uh, Philip Field Anderson, third place yesterday? A lot of pressure on him today, but he looks fantastic. Not as much pressure on him as there is on Canton Field, Maillet, in front of his home crowd. They want a victory. They came close this morning with Julie Simon. That was a wonderful effort from Simon, all the way from 13th up into second place. But uh, it takes something special to beat Johannes Tingisbo. He starts in one. He has never lost a pursuit here in Le Grand Bonnet. He's done it three times. He's won every time. Can he make it four out of four today? There he is. So, the second race of the day. The crowd bathed in sunshine at the moment. They'll be in the shade by the end of this one. It, the temperature will drop. The volume will go up, especially if Phil Maillet and Jacqueline can put in a good performance, perhaps a World Cup winning performance from the French team. They have all the support they might possibly need, but all the pressure as well. Away we go. Johannes Tingisbo is first. 33 points behind in the World Cup, but seven seconds clear at the start of this pursuit. Latyapov is two. Very good prone shoot. Expect him to be in the mix at the halfway marker. Philip Field Elders Anderson goes next. A man from Yilo, a better known as a, an alpine resort in Norway. Uh, his PB yesterday. Can he get two podiums in succession? And then Field Maillet. He blasts his way out of the start gate to try and 
and catch up with Anderson. Behind him, Ligrid, Smolski, Emilian Jacquela, likewise, he's got a lot of support. <laughs> he is the Pursuit World Champion, and he takes some beating in this discipline. I think he will start with a special mission. Christiansen, Samuelsson, the fastest man so far this year, starting nine in yellow. And behind him is Timothy Lapchin with his best result yesterday for the season. Dichaud getting a huge cheer as well. He's been 13, and the French athletes have really had this first 100 metres attacking from the line. They really are going to push the pace out there over the first 2.5. Serik Vostov is underway. 19, that's Lazuski from Belarus. Belarus having a very, very good start to their season. Yes, Benelin goes for Sweden, and uh, nowadays, if they're in the Swedish colours, they are a threat. 24, Benedict Doll. Actually, Sweden have taken the place of Germany, really, Mike, haven't they? Uh, right up in the rankings of uh, biathlon. They have, and that, as you say, the best of the German athletes, Philip Norath, starting 16, and then they're all clumped all the way back to 29. It is a strong team with Roman Rees back in 47th. Yeah, I hope Wolfgang Pickler had something in his contract about future success in the Swedish team and getting some of, reaping some of the rewards uh, because he really was the mastermind behind turning their fortunes around. Let's see the gap at the front. It was seven seconds. I'm not sure Latipov wants to claw back too much, but I'm interested, Mike, what you think Johannes Tingisburg will do today. He doesn't have the stamina yet to race his best for the 12 and a half kilometers. So I wonder whether we're going to see a conservative first couple of laps, or do you think he'll go for broke and try and create such a gap that no one else even thinks about bridging it? Yes, I was thinking through what, what he's capable of. When you don't have your absolute best form, you have to be just a little careful. But I think, I think he's going for the absolute uh, open more deficit time back to the rest and then take the last couple of laps. It seems that's his uh, strategy today. Yeah, he is the only man to have won a pursuit on these tracks. He would love to keep that record going uh, for the next 24 hours. Here we go with that field my through in 23. He started 21 behind, so uh, a controlled start from field my Jacqueline, on the other <laughs> hand, has gone from 33 to, 20 to 23. So uh, Jacqueline absolutely blasting the first loop. That's expensive, Patrick. Look at the, this, the shape of this course profile. Jacqueline has really been sprinting from the gun over those first two and a half minutes. That's expensive, but if anyone yeah. can take pain, it's uh, Jacqueline. He, that's what he does. And, and, and he's taken six seconds out of Samuelson as well. Incredible. And, and you could see him from the from the gun, uh, from when he was released. Uh, Jacqueline, it was uh, like a sprint. I do hope that he can hold it together when he comes to the range. Well, Jacqueline in the background, he really is dragging the rest of the big names there in the, in the first big chase group, dragging them yes. up this climb. Generally, if you look at the pursuit shooting, Mike, uh, the, the first shoot has the most misses simply because that's the one where everyone is in, in, a, in an uncomfortable position. Someone in this group is out of their comfort zone. Uh, I suspect Jacqueline might be close to that. It looks that way, doesn't it? He's just in oxygen debt right now, on his limit. Is he going to try and let someone through? No, he's going to lead down this descent. Eight is Christiansen, as I'm sure you know. Samuelson's pulled uh, three seconds back on Johannes Tinger's burst time. Only two clear shoots in the women's pursuit this morning. Neither of those athletes really under in, in, in the business end of the race, so they weren't really under a huge amount of pressure uh, still, and, and they came from Japan and China. But uh, up front, I think that's one of the best pursuits we've ever seen on the women's tour. Very, very exciting, and all credit to Elvira Erberg for coming through to win that one. And uh, the first non-Norwegian to uh, win a pursuit for the last two seasons. Here he comes. Formerly, well, he is still the uh, defending overall World Cup champion. 
He had a fight on his hands against Ligrid last year. He's, he's certainly not out of it, Mike. He's only 33 points adrift of the leaders. It's the tightest pack season we've had since uh, before the Bjorn Dahl and Poiret days. Oh, it really is. And uh, another good result today for Johannes, and he could certainly find himself up in uh, fourth place in the overall standing. So before he shoots, just give you a rundown of the top five. Samuelson, Jacqueline, Christensen, Phil Maillet, Latipov are the top five, with Johannes Tingisbo in six in the standings as they prepare for the first shoot of four in the men's pursuit. Worst possible start say. for Johannes. Uh, he's taking so long oh. to shoot. Yeah. Needs to just let them rip, as he did in the standing shoot yesterday. Two penalty loops, he's on the chase, and he's not got the ski speed to do that. Latyapov gets into a very, very comfortable position. Five down, no one else got a target down. He is going to be at least 25 seconds clear, if not 30. Ten seconds on the clock, Field my A. One target left, Ligrid, one target left. The two uh, Frenchmen go clear. Jacqueline and Phil Maillet. Smolski of Belarus has hit five. Anderson misses one, so the Norwegians handing it to the, the other nations at the moment. But Christiansen, who is their most reliable shot, hits five out of five. Samuelson has missed one. Lapshin missing two. That could be the end of his chance of another PP. And Tadia Boer, is he coming up through the rankings? He may well do. He's hit five, having started number 15. Look at Johannes Tingisbo, there's a lot going on in his head right now. Uh, a real deficit there, two penalty loops so early on. If he gets the next 15 though, that's what he'll be thinking. He could certainly still take the win. Yeah, I think his brother's going to be a bit surprised to see his uh, younger brother just up the tracks in front of him. Only six seconds between them at the moment. Samuelson down in 14th, having started ninth. Bad start to his pursuit. Lesser, uh, I had Eric Lesser down as the man likely to gain a lot of places along with Lukas Hoffer and Simon Ada. so we'll see who climbs the most places in today's race well look at Lukas Hoffer he's got three out of five misses already what a terrible start well it won't be him then <laughs> <laughs> he's, out, he's out of it <laughs> so many have shot well though Patrick in the in the first 30 into the range and uh, yeah sadly just uh, Anderson, uh, Samuelson, and Johannes Tingisbo missing two. Latyapov of Russia, the new leader. Well, Latyapov, uh, good to see the slow motion there of how he put those targets down. He's, he's just sticking to his normal routine. He shoots fast. He didn't alter that process whatsoever and I would have imagined his first lap was above his normal comfort zone because he he did manage to hold Johannes Tingisbo to seven seconds into the range he will be aware at this point that he's got this lovely 24 second lead but there's some big names in this chase group Ligrid, Fionn Maillet, Jacqueline and Schmolsky's in there as well was 24 seconds, I imagine they've taken that down by three or four seconds, maybe more. Well, 19 seconds from 24, led by Fionn Maillet. Jacqueline resting in behind Fionn Maillet on his second rotation of So one of four shoots completed. Uh, Johannes Tingisbo at 38. He's gained three, but he's left himself with an awful lot of work to do, having missed two targets on that very first shoot. Uh, Latipov has been brilliant in the prone position, Mike. Uh, Johannes Tingisbo has not, and it showed yet again. It's a real shame. I thought yesterday the way Johannes Tingisbo took 31 seconds, but built comfort, built safety, didn't work out today. Uh, maybe his faster routine would be a, a safer option. Just go on reaction. Well, that was, that's what worked in the relays. It's what worked. His standing shoot yesterday was superb in the sprint to secure that victory. And had he not shot quickly, Latyapov would have had him. 
And there is Latipov being chased by a pretty strong quartet. Jacqueline and Fionmaier are in there to keep the uh, local fans. Ligrid is there, and he is dangerous. Ligrid seems to be finding some of the shape we saw last year. He is a little worried about his facial expressions there. He's in absolute agony trying to stay with the two Frenchmen who are really getting the support around the track. Christensen, a little uh, pity there. He's in no man's land. He's on his own. Yeah, Ligrid gaining four seconds on Latipov. Latipov, skiing-wise, Mike, he's, he's a good percentage point behind the Frenchman. Uh, he's about one and a half percent behind Jacques Alain. So you would expect to see that gap at the front close. Uh, question is, how hard are Phil Mayet and, as you mentioned, Ligrid working to stay with Jacqueline? Yes, I think, <laughs> I think they're at the top end of comfort. And, uh, and you have to take uh, discomfort big time uh, when you're racing like this. But it then does put the shooting at slightly higher risk of missing. And if you miss one, we see how that shapes the rest of your race. Johannes Tingisbo was 42 seconds behind, having missed two. And Smolski sitting there in fifth position at the moment. Smolski started six. He's, uh, he's good in the stand shoot. He's still got a 90% record this year in stand. So if he can uh, just get through this shoot unscathed, maybe he can squeak a win today. It's going to be tough. The pressure is on Latipov because he's never been in situation. The pressure also on the French because they know exactly what the fans want. Little change of the sights that look like anti-clockwise. Well, the flags there, uh, they're still dead calm, so he's obviously had a, a, a bored reading from the coaches showing him the fall of the shots. Oh, oh, I was just about to say, shoot of the day, but uh, he throws that fifth one wide, maybe showing a little bit of inexperience there. He's 27, so he's been around a while, been doing biathlon on the World Cup since 2018. And a chance now for Ligrid, who was first to strike. He misses number three as well. Field Maillet, three with three. Jacqueline, five with five. The French could be one and two. They will be, because <laughs> Latipov is just coming out. Actually, Latipov just squeaking it uh, quite quick around that last section. Smolsky onto the penalty loop, so he's got work to do to catch up. Johannes Tingisbo is going to clear five this time. He missed the... Oh, he's got it. He's got it. So five for him, and he's back up into the top six or seven. This is okay for uh, Johannes Tingisbo. He's going to have... Is that Ligrid there as company? It is. Uh, he may well pass Ligrid and drag him around. The race yeah, is still wide open. He's cut the deficit in half, Mike. Teliabo hits five again. So slowly, slowly working up the order, having started 15th. Um, looking at the time deficit, he was... 53 seconds behind he's still at 39 having gone clear <laughs> what a race uh, it's quite incredible uh, and a lot of very good shooting the shooting standard in these uh, wind free conditions at its highest so Russia, yeah Russia France France the order at the moment Latipov a penalty he was very quick round there uh, I wonder whether he'll be able to live with the pace of Jacqueline on this next loop Fiume also up there in the top three Well, that's the way to put the targets down. Display of perfection there from Fion Maillet. So uh, there is an attack on the track. And uh, I suppose it's no surprise. It's Jacqueline who's uh, attacked from the, from the very start. And look at Fion Maillet. That is a big surprise to be now back by some four or five seconds. Lachipov is just on survival, trying to stay with Jacqueline. Well, Fion Maillet, I thought he looked exhausted in the relay last Sunday, having won the day before in this uh, last Saturday, the pursuit competition. Well, Jacqueline, he is incredible. Lachipov will try now on this section of the track to stay or to at least not lose any more time. 
fight. I think he might try and close Jacqueline. Jacqueline has got to be feeling uh, this pace is horrendous. Well, there we are. Lachipov 3.8 behind. Fion Maye, eight seconds deficit. The prone shooting is complete. The first three through the six kilometer marker of this 12 and a half K race. They're almost at halfway. And uh, here comes Johannes Dinger's bow. He's been fighting to close the back. Now at 28.7, he came out of the range, Mike, at 22. So uh, Jacques Alain is absolutely storming it up front. Oh, it's incredible, the pace. And his shooting has still been very, very good. Jacques Alain taking all the pain on the track, but still keeping his accuracy. Ah, but his standing shooting, you cannot say that. 76% for the season. It's his Achilles heel this year so far, and uh, he won't have experienced pressure like this. He won't have experienced a situation like this since the World Championships last year in Pakuka. And on that occasion, he was up to the job. He certainly was. He's, he's proved his track record in this. The pursuit competition is excellent, but I do worry about how the legs are feeling. When you're in your stand position and you've really blasted the track, uh, it, it does add a little extra factor from where you would normally push in a race. He's inspired today at home. Yeah, he's only had two wins. They've both been in the pursuit. They've both been at World Championships, so he rises to the big occasion. And I think a win here would mean as much to him, it would certainly be as beneficial to him, as a win at the World Championships. I think so, and uh, it's only Martin Foucault who's managed to win at home on French snow. Johannes Ding is now at 26, Christian Cern uh, just ahead of him. There's a, a mass of Norwegians waiting to pounce should the French and uh, Latipov of Russia make mistakes on this next shoot. And, and, and I think Latipov will be way out of his comfort zone, so I wouldn't be surprised to see one of his uh, standing shots go wide. Very 11, in. Khalili. Just an athlete we haven't mentioned at all, Patrick, is the overall World Cup leader. Samuelson has missed three and he's down in 19th position. That's so significant in terms of points at the end of the yeah. day. And the bad news for him is he's only got a lead of three points. So the uh, yellow bib could be disappearing because the man in second place, Jacqueline, is leading the field at the moment. And Christiansen's not too far behind and he's in third place. And Phil Maillet is up in second and he's only a couple of points behind. So the chances of Samuelson retaining yellow for tomorrow are looking pretty slim. Look at Phil Maillet, that steep climb there. He deliberately barged his way through and passed Jacqueline. He wants lane number one. One. good decision or bad i think it's good you just you don't then have an athlete in your right periphery you're looking through your right eye and uh, clearly that's what he wants he doesn't want to see anyone in his peripheries yeah an indication that jacqueline may be really really easing up before the shoot which to him perhaps is more in important than having lane number one here we go third shoot first in the stand position Every French target down will cause a mini eruption in the stands. Jacqueline taking ages just to get his legs comfortable and his elbow on his hip. First miss from Latipov. Phil Maillet has five down before Jacqueline has one. So uh, it swings in favour of Phil Maillet, who's uh, been one of the outstanding stars in the French team over the last year, certainly since the retirement of Martin Fourcade. And uh, he's going to have a healthy gap, a chance for the Norwegians to move back into the podium positions. Keep an eye on Johannes Tingis Spurs targets. Will he go fast or will he go slow, which is usually what produces the poor results. Christiansen hits five. Johannes Tingis with that four. A penalty loop of 150. Smolski could be going ahead of Johannes Tingis bow. He will be. Ligrid could do likewise. He does. Great shooting from Ligrid. Well, I've just. Sorry, book. Yet to miss, Mike. Yes, he's having a, a fabulous day. His stand is his weaker option. Yes, Jacqueline, just uh, he will be regretting now. Jacqueline, there he's just gone out. Maybe he'll be regretting the pace that he hit that third lap. Yeah, he did the work for the others. 
and uh, Fionn Maillet, look at that, 43 seconds gain. Johannes back down to 48, furthest he's been behind at any stage today. Looks as though his chances are running out of doing the double and keeping his 100% record of victories here in the pursuit at Le Grand Bournon. Uh, Kalili, solid performance from Kalili. I remember him at the Junior Championships, Mike. He was absolutely outstanding. Uh, you know, like everyone, it's quite a big step between junior and senior level. It is. The interesting point from Kalili, though, is he's managing to, to keep the pressure or to, to, to control the pressure. He's hit 15 out of 15. Benny Vega with five. That will help his cause. Uh, in terms of athletes that have done really well, Eric Lesser has gone from 26 up to 14th. Uh, having hit one. The biggest gainer this morning in the women's race was uh, Ivona Fialkova, who went uh, from 44 up to 16, gaining 28 places. Well, that was good shooting from uh, Phil Mayo. One more like that, and surely he's got this victory in the bag. Two pursuits this season. Two different winners, one of whom was Fionn Maillet and the last one in Hochfilsen. So uh, it's a format that he likes. It's a format certainly that his teammate Jacques Alain likes. And look how much clean snow he's got behind him. This is a wonderful effort from uh, Fionn Maillet. He had 24 seconds coming out of the range over Latyapov. Looks to me as though that's grown. It does, and uh, I did like what Fionn Maillet did last time around. He didn't try and stay with the uh, rocket Jacqueline. In fact, he was eight seconds down at this point, but then he slowly hauled him back on the easier part of the track. Uh, Jacqueline went for the high intensity with uh, a slightly extended rest before coming into the range, and uh, I'm not sure that's the best way of doing it, but they all know their own bodies inside out. Christiansen up into three, that's important in terms of the overall World Cup, because if Jacqueline makes mistakes, Christiansen might well jump in there, and uh, it's, it's a slim chance. He could be back in yellow. There's a chance. Johannes Ting is now at 50 seconds. Must be tough, Mike, when you win more races than you lose, suddenly to have to give 100% to finish in the top five. Yes, and, and that must affect his, his spirit, his mindset, uh, when he used to be able to stay with them and surpass most of them all of the time. Uh, so it is a tough place for Johannes Tingisbo right now. He'll be focusing to try and get those last five shots down. Well, the man who has the smallest targets of all has to be Fionn Maillet. So much to lose at this stage. He's going to see exactly what his lead is. And he may even have a little smile for those coming up. I suspect he'll move to his left, get as close to them as possible. A few mind games going on. It's Latipov and Christensen who see Fionn Maillet resting as he works his way back down towards the stadium. Latyapov, an expensive mistake on that last shoot. Christensen going well so far in terms of the shooting, yet to miss a target. Phil Maillet is clear. We've got Kalili who hasn't missed, and Pepe Femling of Sweden who hasn't missed. Uh, Dobjan also going clear. They're the only four athletes I can see that have the perfect record so far. And at this intensity, it's so difficult to get that 100% hit rate. So far, so good. Um, I'm just thinking, uh, Fionn Maillet has bought himself, warped himself into a, a lovely safety place where he can still miss one and still win this race, given that Latipov and Christensen hit five, that is. That first target, Mike, so important. If that goes down, he may relax a little. If he misses, well, it's going to be tough. What is he made of? He's got his home crowd, as you said, Martin Foucault is the only Frenchman to have won on home snow, and it took him plenty of attempts to do it. He didn't find it easy. Phil Maillet is in exactly the same boat. And of course, the great Martin Foucault, he only managed to do it once, and, and that is the pressure. But so, so lovely to see the spectators back. They do add that extra pressure factor, though, for the home athletes. Yeah, that first shot important. And the next shot that counts, Mike, is when the two chasers take their place on the range. 
and they will probably arrive just before Fiel Maia gets his last round away, unless he goes for a quick shoot, which is what he did on the last one. Here we go, five targets down, the win is his. Four, we could have a little bit of a race on our hands, but he should still be safe. Three, and he's in trouble. Total silence. <laughs> Poetry. Mag Magnificent. Absolutely sensational. That is how to do it. So often, the man in front either melts or he <laughs> makes himself a name. And Phil Maye has done exactly that. He celebrates as he exits the stadium. He's going to enjoy the next two and a half kilometers. And so he should. It's been an impeccable performance. The rest are racing for second. Christiansen, good in the stand. Latyapov has proved himself with a rifle this year as well. Could be a race between the Norwegian and the Russian. It will be. And Jacqueline, if he wants a spot on the podium, has got to be quick and accurate. He can probably give away 10. He cannot give away 150. He can't give away 300. And he certainly can't give away 450 metres. He's out of it. Johannes Tingispo is on the chase for a top five. Ligrid is there as well. So the Norwegians are there in numbers, but it's France who'll be celebrating. 31 seconds clear for Phil Maia. He won't even be out of breath when he crosses the line. How about this, Mike? What a feeling. He cannot take the smile off his face. He is absolutely loving this. Do you know, I think this will be, he's had many great moments in his biathlon career, but right now this must be the best feeling ever <laughs> in his biathlon <laughs> career, a lap of yeah. honour. I think the rest of the field, the remaining 59 athletes will be green with envy. It's so seldom you find yourself in this position. Seven wins to his name, number eight is coming here today on his home snow. Le Grand Bonnard has another French champion, and Martin Fourcade, who's in the stadium, will be loving every second of this as well. Latyapov putting up a really good fight, Mike. Uh, Christiansen is going to have to dig deep if he wants to finish in second. It looks as though Latyapov's going to get that battle. It does well. He did have that two-second, uh, well, deficit to Christiansen. Yes, he's broken Christiansen early, and, uh, and I think he'll try and live with that. It depends yeah, on the it, ski glide. I think that Christensen had a slightly better descent down back to the stadium, so it's not over for second place. Yeah, the margin's about four metres between the two of them. And on the long downhill, Christensen could well close that, but then there's another uphill to come. Here we go then, 11K, 1,500 metres to go. He could probably do it on one ski and still hold on. And the chasers... Yeah, Phil Maillé though, Patrick, he looked exhausted on the second lap. That was trying to live with uh, Jacqueline's pace. He backed off, did his own thing, and what great pacing he's achieved to date. Yeah, another little burst coming in from Latipov, and the gap is growing. Christensen's tempo has just dropped a little bit, and now Christensen needs to be aware of uh, Anton Schmolsky, who's coming up behind and might fancy getting Belarus on the podium again. They've had a good season. Johannes Tingisbo is that? I think it is. He's uh, worked his way away from Ligrid. Well, this is looking good for uh, Johannes Tingis. He wants that fourth position. He came out 49 behind, he's closed it to 44. Uh, relative to Smolski, after the last shoot, Johannes Tingisbo was only seven seconds behind. So Smolski, Mike, holding his own against Johannes Tingis. Uh, Smolski has uh, been so impressive, certainly the last two weekends of racing. His form has come up and up and up, and he really is a, a top contender now. Have a look at this. We seldom get crowds like this at the World Championships. And, and I mentioned it this morning, Mike, in the women's pursuit. Why, oh why, do we not come here every year? Well, yes, I, I have seen it. It's, uh, it's definitely coming here in 2022. So next year, 2024 and 2025. So sadly, just uh, 2023, it won't be coming here for the World Cup.
Well, it's about time we had the World Championships here. Here comes uh, <laughs> Johannes Tingis. In fact, this is Christiansen getting back on terms with Latipov, who maybe worked a little bit too hard on those uh, steep uphills. What's the margin down to? It was six metres. Well, actually, that's still pretty much the same. But if Christiansen can dig deep on this first bit, uh, then he could well get in the slipstream. But Latipov is aware of that, ups his tempo, moves over to the side, and if anything, pulls a little bit away from the Norwegian. Johannes Tingis is safe. Oh, he's, he looks safe, doesn't he? That's quite a margin. Uh, it's what four, seven seconds. It's almost too much at this stage. Not only is Jacqueline going to win this, he's going to go to the top of the World Cup table as well. What a day for him. And he'll come back and be racing in yellow for the mass start, the first mass start of the season, which is tomorrow morning. <laughs> Feel. Uh, Yes, Fio Maillet, Patrick, uh, what, a, what a feeling that must be for him. Started number four, he finished fourth in the World Championships in the pursuit. Having started sixth, he missed two on the very first shoot and then hit the whole lot. Today, no such mistakes, 20 out of 20, an absolutely brilliant ski performance. He didn't lose his nerve at any stage, he didn't chase when he wasn't comfortable. He made his move on that first standing shoot to uh, claim the win, his eighth of his career. Here we go for the finish, Latipov, is he still safe? Christian Sinner thinks left his charge just a fraction too late. It's going to be close, but it's going to go to Latipov, who gets second place. They may just have a photo, but I think Latipov was just there. Good, a well-timed lunge from Christiansen. And Smolski coming in four. He's held off Johannes Tingis. The two best pursuits of the season, both happening here in Le Grand Bonnard. It is a course, Mike, that generally produces good racing. Oh, it's it's quite amazing. And I think the, the easiness uh, in which they come into the range or the easy terrain, it helps for faster and more exciting shooting. But I think Fionn Maillet today was just incredible to hit all 20 at home under such pressure and to win the race from fourth place. Brilliant. Yeah, his worth has just gone up 20%, I think, with that <laughs> performance. And if he doubles it up tomorrow with another victory, then uh, he will be the talk of the town for a long, long time. And, of course, the French will start getting excited about Olympic gold medals. It's always a bit of a worry when your number one retires. And when Martin Foucault uh, retired, he was the first to say, I leave the team in good hands. Uh, and he knew there was enough strength for the team to continue to uh, win World Cups. Samuelson, 11th. Uh, four targets missed. He did fight back after a bad start. Yeah, I think Samuelson, uh, what does he get for 11th place? 20, uh, 30 points, I think he gets for that. So I think he'll just hold on to a top two in the World Cup rankings. But Phil Maia is in yellow. He has a decent margin ahead of tomorrow's mass start. Number 17, Thomas Bormalini of Italy. Let's try and find out who made good gains. Eric Lesser, in the end, 26 to 10, so 16 positions gained. But that uh, is insignificant. Fabian Cloud, who we didn't mention, from 40th all the way up to 14th. How about that? <laughs> well, he was so angry, missing four targets yesterday, Fabian Claude, and uh, one out of 20 today. That's much, much improved shooting. Yeah, and Bakken of Norway, Mike, who we saw in the relays early in the season, uh, he's gone from 49 up to 20. So, in fact, he is the biggest climber of both races today. 29 places gained. He must have enjoyed that. Finishes 2 minutes 14 behind, uh, having started almost exactly the same margin. And sadly, the athlete has dropped the most places. I think it is Anderson from third all the way down to 26th. Yeah, tough day out for him, but he got his podium yesterday, his first ever podium. So uh, that will stay in the record books. No one needs to know about today's race. <laughs> Femling, 27, and uh, Femling with just one miss. Anderson missing six, uh, which as far as I can see is the worst shooting result of the day. Lukas Hoffer, Mike, missing four. Three of those were on the first shoot. 
Oh, what a shame. Just uh, trying to pull back time on the range and often in those split seconds, before you know it, you've missed two or three targets. The alignment was probably out and just trying to push the pace too much. Three men with the perfect shooting score today. As we see Adam Runnels of Canada across the line, up to 38. He's got himself in the World Cup points. I think he can be happy with the way things have gone today. That was a, a good effort from him. Um, the men clear. Christensen, we know about in third place. Phil Maye, the race winner. Uh, a brilliant clear shoot from him. And Khalili, who we've mentioned a couple of times throughout the race, he has shot clear to go from eighth up into 11th. And we haven't really uh, mentioned uh, Jacqueline again since his poor shooting in, in standing. He missed five in total from seventh to ninth uh, by the end of the day. Wow, what a day's action. And we've got the first uh, mass start tomorrow, which is going to be just as exciting. Uh, performance of the day from both races, Mike. Oh, incredible. I think we have to give Phil Maillet all the credit to, to do what he's to manage to do what he's achieved today is quite incredible. That, that would have been his perfect dream last night and how the outcome should go, and he managed to achieve that. And Elvira uh, Erberg, you don't... I, <laughs> I sort of think getting your first World Cup win in these situations is very, very impressive. And, and the fact that Elvira Erberg was under such pressure... Yes, no, that, that's, uh, that takes a lot to do. She, she kept her nerve, having a poor start, and uh, yes, for, for the first time on the podium. And to share that with her sister, a, a great moment for the family. Yeah, both the uh, Erbergs on the podium this morning, and uh, they sandwiched Julius Simon of France, who had an outstanding run, 13th up into second place. Uh, but may, maybe the moment of the day was Jacqueline's final shoot. Fion Maillet. Film, yeah, film, I do beg your pardon. Phil Maillet's final shoot. I was uh, trying to find the time for that, uh, but it cannot have been much more than 20 seconds. If it was 20 seconds, I'll uh, just try and dig that out of the archives and let you know. Sapala was quickest. Uh, he's been given 13.3. Uh, don't know how many of them went down. Uh, Phil Maillet... Uh, 26 seconds, wasn't quite as quick. He took his time in preparation, but once he started, he let them rip. Yes, and that little uh, clap of the hands there, that's where he lost, uh, well, that's where the clock stopped at 26. That was probably a 23-second performance. Campbell Wright from New Zealand, uh, just finishing in 56, lives... Uh, Lake Harweer, if anyone's been out there, just adjacent to Lake Wanaka, one of the most stunning places on the planet. And uh, he'll train up at the uh, snow farm set up by Mary Lee. It's uh, a wonderful training venue. You can go there to ski or rally a car on the, the ice on the lake, uh, which seems to be uh, quite a popular activity. Not so far from Treble Cone. It's uh, a beautiful part of the world. I'm, I'm slightly surprised skiers don't use it more often. Have you been down there, Mike? I have. I, what a lovely place it is. And certainly the American cross-country team, by athletes have gone down there. Uh, I certainly would if I was racing again.
Day, who has just won the third pursuit of the season, and he goes to the top of the world rankings. He will be racing in yellow tomorrow. So a chance to look further down uh, the results. Uh, Gigana today, I thought he was going to have a good one, but missing five targets uh, really set you back. The same with Lukas Hofer, started 30th. He missed three, then zero, then one, then zero. It's a terrible start, but he damaged uh, limitation as he went through the rest of the shooting processes. Paul Schommer dropping back, uh, missing four targets from 35th to 48th. And uh, at the back of the field, uh, Jake Brown there, missing nine. Uh, so a, a poor day on the range from Jake Brown. Started 52. He finds himself in 60th position. So as the sun goes down, a chance to just have another visit to how this race unfolded. Johannes Tingisbo started with a, a decent lead of seven seconds ahead of Lachipov. Philip Field Anderson started third. That was Christensen who, well, until the very end, cleared all his targets. Johannes Tingisbo missing early with two penalties. It's just too much to live with uh, when the field is as tight as this. Fion Maillet and Jacqueline were taking a lot of the ski pace out there and Lachipov all the while was shooting very well. Lachipov getting out to go around his first penalty loop. And then the race on the track was on. Jacqueline was just so psyched up today with the spectators assisting his, his incredible push on the tracks. It didn't pay off for him when it came to shooting. Fion Maillet, on the other hand, just had all the strength and composure on the range. With all these fans trackside, all the fans in the stadium, how he kept his nerve today was quite incredible. Patrick Fabra there just uh, delighted that all those targets went down. Christensen, zero, zero, zero. Still very much in the chase. Lachipov uh, taking the tight line into that bend and gaining some uh, to go ahead of Christensen, and that's the way it stayed. Fion Maillet, 20 out of 20 for the victory. And Christensen, that lunge across the line, he does have the longer legs, but he didn't quite manage to put that foot, slide his uh, foot ahead of Lachipov. And there's the one, two, three. Still good points for Christensen. And the full 60 Daddy, points. Here he is, the winner. Perfect, Bayerflin. Can you describe what you've done today? Uh, maybe it's the uh, most emotion I can uh, raise in my career, you know. For the public, for the victory, the last shooting, it's so much.
so much emotion and uh, uh, and uh, it's so good, so good. I can't explain uh, my emotion, but it's uh, very strong. How was this last loop? You know, I can share with the public, with my coach, with my... Ah, it's uh, very good, very good. Perfect Enjoy game. it. Enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> well, wasn't that great to hear the emotion? He can't even express it. And uh, to achieve what he's achieved today is quite incredible. There's a, a slow-mo or a stop frame of uh, Lachipov. He, Lachipov didn't even stretch, actually, to the extent that Christensen is stretching. And I think he was taken by surprise there. He didn't expect Christensen to come alongside him. But uh, Lachipov, in the end, was safe in second. Well, they've still to go through all of this again tomorrow. It's the mass start, so the best 20 in the World Cup and the best 10 on form will start tomorrow in the men and the women's race. So that is going to be another amazing scenario and situation here in France. Uh, well, there's the World Cup pursuit score. So this is the pursuit only. And uh, Phil Maillet just moving ahead by quite a margin, actually, ahead of Jacqueline. Samuelson still third place, even with his 11th position today. And uh, further down, Benny Vega. He's been consistent all season, and he's, he's gained another three points today, uh, 12th position with 76 points. And Ligreed uh, did himself no harm today, finishing in sixth position. Khalili jumping nine today. That's good to move up into 22nd spot uh, in the overall pursuit score. His uncomplicated rifle, in fact, which he broke in this race in Sweden at the second World Cup. He came back to France to get that rifle fixed and, uh, and he won last weekend as well in uh, Hochfilsen. There we are, Fionn Maillet is at the top of the world by three points. He starts tomorrow in yellow. Does that any, add any more pressure? Well, many say it does. But Samuelson still second, Jacqueline third and uh, Christensen uh, dropped down into fourth position. He's dropped one place actually. Further down, the best of Germans, uh, Johannes Kern, 12th position, 179 points. Lukas Hofer dropping two today with his poor shooting. Kretschmar, we haven't seen the best of Kretschmar yet. He's, he's shown solid performances, but uh, he needs to lift his form should he want to achieve, uh, as he did four years ago in Korea, the silver medal in the sprint competition there. Love the way that Fio Maie glides over the snow with such efficiency. Quite interesting there, so Christensen and Lachipov uh, just sharing notes there in English. And uh, Lachipov, it was a, a good moment the, the, where he broke ahead of Christensen. Uh, he read the terrain well, cut the corner tight and got ahead. And there's Smolsky, yet another uh, brilliant day for Smolsky from Belarus. Fourth position, 32 seconds behind. And the consistency of shooting from Smolsky, uh, he must think, uh, he'll be thinking later tonight about tomorrow in the mass start. And he must think that he's got a, a chance of winning. He has to beat this man though, uh, Fion, Quentin Fion Maillet. He's found the magic uh, formula here. Fourth position in the sprint competition. A win today. And the fact that Fion Maillet did start 21 seconds behind and then at the end of the day, he won the race by 16. There's the great Martin Foucault. Uh, I was going to say taught him everything, but uh, well, they're around and through the system at much the same 
progressions in their career. So Martin Fourcad uh, gracing the venue as well. Good to see him. And of course, he is the expert uh, for uh, Eurosport down at these uh, at this World Cup. So Fio Maillet tonight, uh, he'll need to try and get as much rest in amongst all the, the press interest that will be surrounding this performance. And uh, can he bring tomorrow to his performance, which he showed today? It's a big task. He said two years ago when he raced here, it was the greatest pressure. His nerves, he could hardly control them. And he said on day one here, well, at least he's been through that and, and he is aware how stressful how, and how much pressure there is on you as an athlete here racing at home. So he was um, prepared for, for that feeling. As the mascot dances <laughs> and entertains. The athletes uh, will be, of course, uh, so proud, Christensen, to step on that podium. And he'll be thinking about resting and recovery as soon as this uh, little ceremony is over to try and uh, bring some energy back into his legs and again come back out tomorrow. But tomorrow it's 15 kilometers. Well done to Vetlip Shastat Christensen, third place once again such improvement into this Olympic season from Christensen. Well, Latipov was second yesterday. He's second again today, and it was close. He missed two. Fiomaye shot the perfect score, and he was only 16.1 seconds behind. Well done to Edward Lachipov. IBU vice president uh, just giving the nod there. No handshakes, of course. Two days, twice second for Lachipov. So, <laughs> emotional moments for uh, the great Quentin Fiomaye. Only the second biathlete, male biathlete, to win on home snow ever. The Olympic Games came here in 1992 to Albaville. They didn't get any male victories at that time. But today, Fiomaye knows how it feels to win at home for the first time. <laughs> So impressive, especially when he could control his nerves and build the rifle into the position and keep it so steady to hit 20 out of 20. Quentin Fiamaye, congratulations to him and uh, the top six are honoured at the prize-giving ceremony. And, uh, well, fabulous time from Anton Smolski. Sixth place yesterday. He's moved up to fourth position today. Can he make it to the podium tomorrow in the mass start? His shooting is good. His skiing improving all the while, so he could well be a threat. Well, Johannes Tingisbo, he grabs the flowers. They know how unique this athlete is. The French spectators know what it takes to be a winner. And Johannes Tingisbo has been a winner here on so many occasions. 
He has to settle for fifth today. So Sturla home, Ligrid uh, taking the sixth position, 52 seconds behind. Couldn't stay with Johannes Tingisboe. In fact, he left the range before Johannes Tingisboe on the final lap. Johannes, on that occasion, had the faster ski time. Well, thanks uh, very much for your company as the day closes here on the men's pursuit competition. But uh, please do join us again tomorrow for the mass starts. <laughs> if today was anything to go by, we will have another fantastic day tomorrow. So I'm sure the partying uh, will go on late into the evening here. And uh, the fans will be expecting and hoping for the same results. Maybe a different name, but uh, a French victory tomorrow is what they want. My name's Mike Dixon. Uh, see you again tomorrow for the two mass starts. The women's mass start here in Le Grand Bonand and the men's as well. Goodbye for now.